<laughs> I love you. Wow. <laughs> oh, Reverend Michael, you have been an amazing piece of my life as well. And I can't wait to get into this conversation with you and uh, dig in. But first, we want to start with where this all began for you. Right. Um, you had an awakening in college. I I, I've had several, but uh, uh, my, my awakening as, my first awakening as an adult was in my last year at USC. I was a psychobiology major and I was on track to go to med school. And I began to have a series of inner experiences. And at that time, I labeled the experiences pathological because you don't want to tell your uh, teachers that you're hearing voices or having visions or leaving your body. And I didn't know what any of that was. I hadn't studied any of that material. And ultimately, it culminated with um, these men chasing me in, in a lucid dream. This went on for a long period of time. And then one night, they were very close. I could even make out the features on their face. And I decided not to run anymore. I looked around, and there was a small tent behind me with thousands of people trying to fit into this tent. And I knew every single person in line. And I said to myself, they can't hurt me. I have all of my friends with me. And then one by one, they all turned their back on me. Two men grabbed me. One man uh, took a knife and plunged it into my heart. And the pain was excruciating, physically and emotionally. I screamed out and I died. And when I woke up, I could see I was surrounded by this tremendous beauty that was indescribable. The love that was penetrating my being was beyond anything I had ever experienced in life. And so my name for the presence of God was love beauty. It was the beauty everywhere, the lint on the rug glowing with the luminosity of, of the presence, everything shining, and, and I just felt penetrated by love every cell of my being. And, and I knew that things had changed for me. And the, the box I was living in at that time, I never could get back in it again. Mm -hmm. And I remember calling up a woman who was a friend of my family's who was a spiritual counselor. And I, I thought what she was doing was sweet, but I didn't have that much interest in it. And I called her up and I said, I know everything you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And she said, really, baby? I said, yeah. I said, we're living in it. It's living in us. It's everywhere. And I began my sojourn to discover what had happened to me. And then over years, integrating into uh, that expanded awareness. It was very powerful. I know. It is a life-changing reality when we wake up from right. the reality we were living in right. into a greater picture. And healing happens on every level every in our level. lives under those, under those conditions. Every, so, you know, one of the things that I was aware of is that when that happened, it's like worry disappeared. It was like I was looking at humanity and everybody was worried about something and afraid of this and afraid of death and afraid of loss. And it was like, we don't have anything to worry about. <laughs> I mean, nothing every, everything just fell off. <laughs> yeah, you've, you've mentioned um, in describing that, that fear died yeah, fear, that night. Yeah. It and was, can you say more about that? Just it was, it was like, um, People live in a kind of anxiousness or anxiety about the future. Yeah. Like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen if I lose my job? What's going to happen if this happens? Or, you know, and they create all kinds of mental scenarios that they experience, even if it doesn't happen, because it's in their, it's right. in their thinking. Right. And all, everything just completely stopped. And the, the fear dissolved, the worry dissolved. And, and there was a period of time where I didn't have any friends because everybody thought that I was really weird. So I lost all my friends at that time. And everybody thought I just freaked out, you know. But I was just so present yeah. and so alive that eventually my, my, the people that came into my life were more into the frequency of, of who I was at that moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then someone from your past sought you out. A uh, high school, woman from high school um, f found you and for counseling. Oh my God. Wanted you yes, to, to speak, yes. Yes. To speak I, with her. You know what happened? I was sitting in my living room and I was wanting to know what I wanted to do with my life. And the phone rang and she called me and she said, I found your phone number in the high school annual and I was guided to call you. I've been having all these particular issues and I, I, I was told that you could help me. So I began to do spiritual counseling on the phone with this woman. 
And this went on for a period of time. I helped her through a lot of things. And then one day I was at a restaurant. I saw her in line. Now keep in mind, I, I hadn't seen this woman since high school. And we never saw each other. This was all done on the phone. So one day I saw her in line. I said, oh, there she is. And so I called out her name and she looked at me and she left the restaurant. She was so embarrassed because she had given up her, what she thought were like dark secrets and mm. things she was working through. And mm. it was good for her when I was like this person on the other end. <laughs> Way over there. Praying for her and giving her guidance. <laughs> right. Well, she actually saw me. <laughs> Makes and it real. She never called me again. Mm. And then I thought to myself, I didn't even have this phone number in high school. And at that mm. time, my phone was unlisted. So oh, I don't know how she got the number. This is a cosmic phone call. It was a cosmic phone call and <laughs> it put me on the trajectory yeah. of what I would to do with my life. Yeah, started to align you. And then that parlayed into yeah. agape. Yeah, it parlayed. I, you know, I started seeing people one-on-one -on -one, and then I got a spiritual counseling license later on. I was seeing people, six to eight people every single day for years. And I would see miracles and all kinds of manifestation and people's lives changing. And then that parlayed into me going to the school mm -hmm. uh, of higher consciousness to get a degree. And interestingly enough, so I wasn't going there to start a community. I was going there because I liked being in the frequency of people who had something to offer in terms of a higher conversation. Mm -hmm. So I'm going mm -hmm. through class. It took me five years to go through a three-year program because I had no interest in graduating. I just like meeting certain teachers. If they had something, mm -hmm. I would take that class. Mm -hmm. You know, they had a new way of languaging some of my insights. And then one day the assistant dean said to me, Michael, when are you going to graduate? I said, I'm not trying to graduate. Graduate? And she said. <laughs> this is about graduating. <laughs> she said, um, would you, you are aware that when you graduate as an alumni, all classes are free? I said, really? <laughs> I'm going to graduate next month. <laughs> so I took a full load <laughs> and got out of there. And then there was this intense pressure from inside to start a community. And I resisted that for a long time. I was in another spiritual community. I was running the youth program. I was doing spiritual counseling. I was doing classes, workshops. I had a pretty full life yeah. already. And I didn't want to take on starting something. Mm -hmm. But eventually my resistance was worn down. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, eventually it, it just has to unfold, it, it our is. destiny. So I'm, uh, I'm here at the Healing Matrix, uh, all about um, pulling together all the ways that people heal. What is it that happens that, that, that allows for healing to happen in an individual's life, in their body, um, in every aspect of right. them, every dimension of their being? Uh, what is it that people are seeking when they come to Agape, uh, when they're seeking a spiritual avenue toward mm -hmm. healing? What kind of healing are, are they seeking? What, what's behind that? You know, there's, there's, um, there's so much in so many levels, but ultimately an individual is seeking to connect with themselves they have gotten, as I say, they've gotten aligned with the content flowing through their consciousness, and they think that content is who they are, mm. their experiences, their interpretation of past experiences, um, and that content has produced experience in their life. Coagulation, stagnation, ill health, uh, stagnation around success. And so they're seeking to have an awareness, an awakening as to who they are. Their real identity, not the son or daughter of a parent, mm -hmm. you know, not where they were born, not the school they went to, but actual awareness, a growing awareness as to who they really are as a nominal being, a spiritual mm -hmm. being, a, mm -hmm. a timeless being. Mm -hmm. And that's big. So they don't, many of them don't know that consciously that's what they're seeking. Yeah. They think they want a better employment or a better relationship. But, yeah. You know, they want the stuff, right. which is nothing wrong with that at all. But ultimately, they want to know themselves. They really want to know who they are. Yes, right. Who am I? Right. What am I? And you and I both know that that is at the root of all healing. When that answer starts to come forth and we start to land and connect with that, healing starts to unfold. It can't not. It's a natural because byproduct. Because we are that. Because yeah. 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 healing is actually a revelation. Mm -hmm. It's actually the revealing of our intrinsic wholeness. Yes. That we can't add anything to ourselves at all. There's, yeah. we're already, there's already a, a perfection that's unfolding. Yes. And so what we're doing is wiping away the dust. Yeah. We're getting away the grit, the perceptions, the limited point of view, so people can see. People suffer from a spiritual astigmatism. They can't see reality. Yeah. They can't see themselves. And they only experience their thoughts about reality. 
Most people don't experience reality at all. Right. Only their thoughts about it. Yeah. And so, yeah, as you said, once we know who we are, then the natural thing that happens is there's a revelation of wholeness yeah. in areas of our life. We become like a child again. Yeah. We, the innocence is there. It doesn't have a shelf life. It doesn't have an expiration date. Yes, you know? exactly. Yeah.